Hello, welcome back to Alan Wake episode 1, uh, Nightmare Mode, and we're playing as a pacifist, or trying to. In other words, we're trying our hardest not to kill anyone or shoot anyone. Uh, unfortunately here we have to, we have no choice. It is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and the developers have made it this way. Um, so I'll explain what I'm uh, getting myself into before I go down there. Uh, so we've got three taken and we have a boss called Tikal Stucky and we need to activate the gate. Now the problem is, is the gate is connected to Carl Stucky and uh, even if you trigger the gate it will automatically close because Carl Stucky um, uh, shuts it. So I've tried all sorts of things. Um, there's actually a way you can get past this first trigger and that's why I'll just show you that. So if I go any further down there, I'm going to start triggering the boss. But actually if I come through here and jump through that section there, um, I can get past the first part of that trigger. But as I go down there, I will activate the trigger of the boss. Um, so no matter what I do, uh, yeah, I have to get rid of Carl Stucky. Now, technically I should have three flares, but I accidentally wasted one. I can still do this with three players until with one actually. Uh, so I'm gonna instead of shooting Carl Stucky, I'm gonna shoot the the log next to him. And ha you know, unfortunately, um, if he's dumb enough to stand on it, that's his problem. All right. So that's how I'm gonna reason out of it. So all you do is yeah. And that should take out a few bosses there. And yeah, open this up. Alright. Oh, it didn't kill him. Okay, I'm gonna need to do it again. So I'll really like that now. Huh? Okay. There, yeah, shut up. Okay. Um uh, Let's weaken these two down. Right, that's them two done. Now we're gonna make sure he's not walking into me. Okay, that should be enough. And again, we just want to make sure that we're going to have to jump over and run through. Again, watch your back. Uh, you're about to find the first TV at the gas station where we see Alan Wake raving like a lunatic. Uh, Cynthia Weaver actually talks about a similar thing later on in the game when she mentions that uh, Thomas Zane has been talking to her from beyond and uh, from television and it's kind of a similar thing. Wake isn't aware of how it's happening but you know, that's what it is. Uh, we are thinking of Alan Wake as a kind of a sum of three parts actually. Uh, our writing, uh, Ilka Willis, uh face and body language and Matthew Poretta's voice. And since we shot this stuff on video instead of producing producing it with our game engine, that's actually Alan Wake at his purest, you could say. And you know, not coincidentally, it's also Alan Wake at his craziest. I think the developer has a uh, Space Invaders T-shirt on. <laughs> okay, so basically, you saw how I had to get around that one. Um, I actually did that the hardest way uh, possible for some reason. Uh, you can actually just get rid of Carl Stucky with one thing. So as I come down, they will appear again. Uh, there's, uh, just keep in mind of that too. So the trigger's here somewhere. Okay, so we're back. We finally made it to the gas station. I recognized the parade float I had seen in Bright Falls when I first arrived with Alice. Now that's an interesting point. So... 
if you remember the uh, the float that it was going up the road evidently it was going to a gas station um, and this is where it stays so it is possible that when we were in the diner and Alice uh, needed to fill up full of petrol she may have actually gone to this petrol station which is Stucky's and for some reason Stucky instead uh, maybe because he After wasn't the insanity actually... I had just experienced in the darkness the lights of the gas station felt comforting at least for a moment the sane world reasserted itself uh, because Carl Stuckey owns uh, also accommodation that's why he's known as the businessman of the year or whatever the case may be uh, that's why even though he owns the gas station he may have uh, told us that, uh, to meet him in the diner um, there only seems to be uh, one gas station in this small town of uh, Bright Falls. So, uh, this may have been where she had come, as I stated. Okay, so we've got a couple of things here. We have um, the page. Now, I actually missed a page. Well, I got the page, but I didn't actually activate it. So, let's go activate all the different pages that I missed. Uh, I think that one we've done. Barry Wheeler was bouncing off the walls. He jumped on a plane after his calls were ignored by both Al and Alice for several days. It could mean that they were both on a second honeymoon, but Barry didn't buy it. Al had been way too unstable for that, not sleeping, messed up. Barry had years of experience dealing with Alan Wake, and he couldn't ignore it. Something was wrong. Okay, awesome. Uh... Oh, okay. Toby knew the smell. It was the man. The nice man who always gave him treats and never got tired of playing with him. Toby wagged his tail in excited anticipation and gave a joyous bark. Then there was another smell. A wrong smell. And it was alien enough to stop Toby in his tracks. Confused, he growled deep in his throat. The wrong smell came from the nice man. Blind animal terror pierced the dog's brain an instant before the axe followed suit. Okay, so if you remember, we uh, heard on the radio about a missing dog called Toby. Now, what had ha actually happened, this is uh, in the past, Toby met a guy with an axe, who evidently is uh, referring to Carl Stuckey. And, and uh, even though Carl Stuckey was normally a nice man, the dog had picked up that there was something wrong with him, and he growled. Um, and unfortunately, Carl Stuckey... Um, yeah, killed Toby. So, uh, if you ever wanted to know what happened to Toby, that's unfortunately what happened. Um, there we go. Alright. Uh, now there's one more. Now, here's an interesting part here. Uh, the Deer Fest had been two weeks away when we arrived. If the day count on the banner was right, I was missing a whole week between the night we got here and now. Okay, so a week's gone by since we jumped into Cauldron Lake and we wake up at a car accident. A whole week which we're missing. We, we don't know what happened. Now what's interesting about that if you remember is the bags in the suitcases in the car never changed. Like they were never got out of the car. So, evidently, what happened? You know, how did we survive a whole week? Um, quite an interesting little dilemma. Um, I had to get inside the gas station to find a phone to call for help. I think if you go down there, there's um, a coffee thermos and all that. Um, might be one down there too, I can't remember. Uh, but there's also Taken, which you don't really need to go down there, so I'm not going to bother. Um, there is another page behind here, though, so let's go get that one. And again. Toby knew the smell. Oops. It was Sorry. the man. <laughs> Barry took another sip of the heavenly coffee. He grinned at Rose. Surely this was love. Rose gushed on breathlessly. The new one will be a masterpiece, I know it. You must tell him not to listen to the trolls in the forum saying departure will never get finished. 
He should take his time and make it perfect. I can wait. Uh huh. Let's wait. Uh. Okay. So that's all the pages for episode one. Evidently, we are coming to the finish now. Um, just a couple more secrets you may not have gathered. So, if you remember, one of the pages talked about Carl Stucky, that uh, eventually the dark presence grabbed the him. The garage was a mess. It looked like someone had trashed the place, or that there'd been some kind of fight. And he nodded over a can of oil. So this is the actual spot where Carl Stucky was taken by the Dark Presence. Creeping in. Um, okay, here we go. I'll write. I'll keep writing. Outside there's only darkness. Outside the cabin, outside the story, there's only darkness. I can feel her presence in the dark. Just now, I could smell her perfume in the room. I'll reach her, I'll fix it up. I'll bring her back. The story will come true. If I stop, she's lost. I don't believe this. It'd been me on the TV, talking crazy. Was I losing my mind? Okay, so somehow he just saw himself on TV. Hey, Nordic walking! You have to do Nordic walking. You can read this. But to Charlie, we'll meet that a bit more later. Um, uh, e exit out. Um, there's not really much more to do here, unfortunately. Be cool if there's a lot more things to read. Uh, so you got cabin rentals. As I said, that's why he was the businessman of the year. Oh, that was use the phone. Something. I thought I saw something else come up. No. Uh, that's probably. Oh, that's that one. Hmm. Video camera surveillance. Okay. Where? Smile. Yep, so that seems to be it. Okay, so let's use the phone and we'll finish episode one. Bright Ball Sheriff Station. Oh, thank God, Sheriff. Sheriff Sarah Breaker, you are... I'm Alan Wake, but listen, I was in a car crash. My wife, Alice, she's missing. Calm down, Mr. Wake. We were staying in a cabin on the island, on Cauldron Lake. There's no island on Cauldron Lake, not since the big eruption in the 70s. Please, I can take you there, okay? You look like you've taken a pretty bad knock to the head. Are you okay? Listen... We'll figure this out. Please get in the car. We'll swing by the lake, and then we'll go to the station, okay? Mr. Wake, have you seen Stucky, the guy who owns this place? I realized I couldn't tell her what had happened in the forest. She wouldn't have believed me. And then she wouldn't have helped me with Alice. Cabin in Cauldron Lake. 
And that's the end Looking of episode one. They call the so I hope you enjoyed it. Join me next time as we uh, go through episode two. See you then. Bye for now. Just a sprinkle of stardust and a whisper. Go to sleep. Everything is alright.